Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, I want to show how to install WordPress on Casa OS. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page, and right here you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm going to come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see that Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So if you've been watching this series where I install different applications on Casa OS, uh, we're just going to continue to add to those list of applications. But uh, if you caught my video about Bookstack, and I mentioned in that book video um, that we would have to change the ports of our uh, database application or container um, if we decided to have other databases on the system, uh, we're actually going to have to do that sort of in this video, and I want to kind of cover uh, what's going on here. So uh, let's jump over to my desktop and actually take a look at getting WordPress and uh, a Maria database installed. So here we are on my desktop, my, my Casa OS dashboard here. And because we've already taken a look at how to install a database in a previous video, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna kind of cheat just a little bit. And I'm gonna do a custom install with an import um, that I've got set up over here. I'm gonna download this and I'm just gonna drag this over. Oops, nope, not there. I'm going to click here. There we go. And then, and then I can drag this over to here um, and then click submit. And then it's, of course, going to say, hey, be sure you check all of these settings to make sure that they are correct for what you want to do. So I'm going to click OK. So if we start up here at the top, we've got a, a Docker image uh, of Linux servers, uh, Maria database, the latest version of that. Uh, the reason I decided to go this route with the Maria database versus using a Gioba systems or something like that is that Linux servers do, done a really good job of making sure that their containers are cross system compatible or cross architecture compatible. So it should be uh, compatible to be on x86 or ARM or, or basically whatever. Uh, below that, of course, we've got an application name of WordPress DB. The icon URL, you can leave this, it's fine. It will actually pull the right image for this as far as having uh, the database image for Maria Database. However, if you want to change it, you can absolutely put in a different uh, URL, icon URL right there. Man, if I could talk today. Again, because there's no real user interface for this database, uh, we're going to leave the, the web UI blank. Uh, the network is going to be bridge, and that's fine. Uh, we're actually going to talk about this network here in just a few minutes. Below that, we've got ports set up, or a port rather. Uh, the container port is 3306, and I've got the host port set to 3307. Because, as I mentioned in that previous uh, Bookstack video, I've already got the Bookstack database on port 3306. So to avoid any kind of interference uh, with, uh, with trying to use the same port twice uh, on the Docker server, uh, I had to change that to 3307. Now, when we actually get to the point where we're going to install the WordPress container, uh, we're going to do things a little weird on this just to make sure it works uh, after doing some troubleshooting and that sort of thing before I made this video. Uh, I found uh, a way to make this work more easily. Um, but again, I'll show you that here in just a moment. Uh, below that, we've got volumes. I've got the database uh, set up at uh, home slash docker slash WordPress slash database. And of course, that's mapped to the slash config uh, folder inside the container. So below that, we've got environmental variables. We've got a PUID and PGID. Uh, those are based on your username, uh, whatever you use to log into your into your Casa OS instance. Uh, so you'll want to uh, get the IDs for those via command line. Uh, for the MySQL root password, I've got that just a, a string of characters. My time zone is uh, America slash Denver, because that's where I am. Uh, the database and user, I've got both got set to WordPress. You can absolutely change that to something else uh, if you want to do that. Just make sure that you keep note of the database uh, value, the user value, and the MySQL password value that will that is actually the last thing in the environmental variables here. Uh, so make sure that you keep note of those, especially those three things, so that we, when we jump over to the WordPress container, we'll have uh, all of the information we need to connect. 
Below this, we've got devices, memory limits, CPU shares, restart policy, and app description. Those are all fine as their default settings. Uh, however, you can adjust those if you need to for whatever reason. Once we've got this set up, uh, the way we want it set up, what we're gonna do is actually just click install. Um, and then it's gonna go ahead and pull the latest version of the, the Linux server.io uh, Maria database onto the system and then deploy it in a container. Once that's done, uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at what our next steps are. A few moments later. Okay, so everything is up and running. Here we can see that we've got a Maria database called WordPress DB. At least that's the title that we've given it for our dashboard here. So the next thing that we wanna do is actually open a terminal window here because what we wanna do is actually get the IP address of the container. Uh, when we install WordPress, it's going to, we're gonna to have to put in a database host. And after doing some 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 testing with this this morning and trying to get things to work, uh, I put in, you know, the, the server's IP address with port 3307, and it just would not connect. So I found a workaround for that, uh, that I want to show you here. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to pull up my terminal window here. Uh, I'm going to do ssh uh, pi at uh, 192.168.1.130. And I'll press enter. And I'll put in my password. Okay, <clears throat> so what I want to do first is list out, in fact, you know what, I lied. First thing I want to do, I want to make this big, like so. Now what I want to do is actually get a list of all of my running containers on the system. So what I'm going to do is type in docker space ps, I lied, sudo docker ps, like so. And here we can see uh, all of the different things that are up and running. Uh, if we take a look uh this Linux server Maria database right here um, has got uh, port 3307 on it. So this is the container ID uh, that we want to take a look at uh, and, and get the IP address of that container. Uh, now, if you've watched some of my other videos, this command may be familiar, um, but what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in there. And then I'm gonna grab this container ID. And I'm gonna put it right there. So, <clears throat> You know what, let me grab this whole thing here and clear my screen. Oops, there we go, there we go. All right, so basically what we're saying is, hey Docker, uh, what we're gonna do is inspect our network settings and look for an IP address. Uh, the IP address that we're looking for specifically is this container ID that we've got up here. So what I'll do is press enter, oops. Uh, let's do sudo there. There we go. So our IP address is 172.17.0.5. So I'm going to bring this over to a different window just so that it's out of my way. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and inst uh, work on the install for WordPress here. Okay, so here we've got all of our, our app information uh, already in here. WordPress latest for our Docker image. Our application name is WordPress. Our icon URL is there. Our web UI port I put on 84. Uh, that's how we're going to access WordPress. Um, of course, below that, we've also got bridge for our network. I've switched our ports from 8080 to 8480, as we can see here. <clears throat> so next, we've got our volumes at home, Docker, WordPress. You know, I'm going to put this um, under, uh, put that under HTML, just so that the, the, Word, or so that, uh, the WordPress stuff and the database stuff are each in their own separate folder there. Uh, below that, we've got a WordPress database host. And here we can see that I've got 172.17.05, just like we saw a moment ago when we pulled the IP address of this container. Um, that is the IP address of the container on this, on this Docker network for this bridge network. So because it's using an IP address for the container, we don't have to use that 3307 that we set earlier because we're not using the server's IP address. It's a little convoluted in my opinion, but if we use the container IP address, we can use the port on that container. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so basically, like I said, 172.17.05 with port 3306 instead of 3307. Uh, our user and our, and our, and our uh, database name are both WordPress and we've got our password in there as well for that. <clears throat> uh, and that's basically it. Uh, we're going to, again, we've got devices, memory limits, CPU shares, race chart policy, and app description that we can fill in if we'd like or change if we'd like. We don't need to, but you absolutely can. So once all of this is set up the way we want it to, uh, we can come down here and click install. And again, it will go through this process of pulling everything. Uh, I did actually have it lock up my system at one point when I was doing some testing this morning. Uh, hopefully we don't run into that here. We'll give this a minute and then we'll come back. A few moments later. Okay, so it has installed after just a couple of minutes, and here we've got WordPress on our dashboard here. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, of course, again, up here, we can see that the CPU is still kind of bouncing around a little bit. We're going to hang out and wait for this to, uh, to calm down so that it's like, so that it stays around that five to 6% uh, for a minute or so. And then once it has done its thing, then we will uh, go ahead and open up WordPress. We want to give it a chance to settle in and do what it needs to do. So we'll give this a minute and then we'll take another look here. Oh, there it goes. Just needed to be patient. Okay. Now, this is good. This is what we want to see. This means that everything is working the way we want it to. Now, if you only want to access this locally on your local network on an IP address, then go ahead and continue with the installation uh, and, and filling out all of the rest of the blanks here. However, if you want this to be accessible on the internet with a domain name, you'll want to go back and rewatch uh, one of my other videos where I show how to set up Nginx Proxy Manager. Um, I don't want to go through it here because I've already gone through it a few different times uh, in, in other videos. So uh, once you've got uh, the application set up in Nginx Proxy Manager uh, with a domain name and Cloudflare and all that kind of stuff, however you want to handle that, uh, then you uh, should be brought back to here once you're on that domain name or that subdomain. And uh, then we can actually go through this process of uh, selecting your language and that sort of thing. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and give it a site title. We're going to call this uh, Casa OS Tutorial. And of course, oops, DB Tech. And I'll just copy that password, my email. And then the search visibility, that is completely up to you. Uh, of course, by checking this box, you're saying, hey, search engines, please don't index my site. However, they are under no obligation to honor your request. So that's just something to keep in mind there as well. Once we're happy with all of this, we can click install WordPress. Let's close this. Cool, WordPress has been installed. So we'll click log in. And we'll go ahead and do that. And here we are on the most current version of WordPress, in this case, WordPress version 5.9.1. And of course, at this point, you're set up and ready to go. So there may be some other things that you might wanna do uh, to make this uh, have some more functionality or, or be a bit more user-friendly. You may want to do things like increase your PHP file size limit. You may wanna do uh, your, your max file size, your max upload size, all that kind of stuff. And there are, there are so many different ways to do that. I don't really want to cover it here. Uh, just know that you can do it via HT access. You can do it through php.ini. You can probably do it through environmental variables. Uh, so there are a few different ways that you should be able to do that. Uh, and I'm going to let you decide the best way for you to handle your setup in that regard. But I did want to show the process of, of getting the database installed, getting a WordPress installed, and then also making sure that you've got the right ports and IP addresses to connect to the proper containers for connecting the application and the database. So of course I will leave links to all of this in the description down below so that you can uh, install this on your own system and, and play with it, get used to it, get familiar with it. Of course, if you guys got questions or comments or ideas, anything like that, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you would like to support the channel, there are plenty of ways you can do that also down in the description, whether it's through coffee or PayPal or Patreon or whatever you want to do. It's all down there. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to, but that's always an option if you decide that you'd like to do that. I do want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. It really does mean quite a bit to me, but I think with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.